Hey guys, Lucky here, back with a um, bit of a random video. I'm um, just doing some some foil maintenance. Had a few scratches and things on my foil, and I've been sick for the last week and a bit, so figured I'd clean up the foil while I, while I can't be out in the water. So yeah, don't know if the audio is going to be any good because I'll be sanding at the same time, but yeah, just figured touch on a few little things with foil maintenance. Very random video, but just figured, why not? Basically all I'm doing is, um, I've filled some deeper scratches with just a little bit of epoxy that I had mixed up the other day. I had it mas masked off, so I didn't really, I only really got epoxy in the areas that I wanted to. And then what I'm doing now is just sanding it down flush so that the epoxy that is above the surface of the, the random scratches that I had from from using the foil um, gets removed and we're just left with a nice smooth surface that has been filled with epoxy or well, nice yeah nice smooth surface with the cracks that have been filled with epoxy pretty pretty easy thing to do um, I just use some some West Systems epoxy and I only had the slow cure stuff, so um, yeah, I just had to give it a um, at least sort of 24 hours to, to go off. But yeah, that's about it. You just fill the active cracks with, sorry, active scratches with, with epoxy. And then I've just got some, I only had 600 and 1200 grit sandpaper, so. We'll do a once over over the whole foil with 600 grit. And then it's a bit of a jump. Ideally, you'd, you'd make a few steps, probably 600, 800, maybe 1,000, depending on the water and conditions that you ride in. But yeah, but yeah, basically got most of the excess epoxy off this edge. Back edge has probably got a little bit more. And then I've also done the, the winglets because I had a few deeper like fairly deep scratches in these. Yeah, one of the intricacies of the eagle is having these little wing tips makes it um yeah a little annoying <laughs> to to maintain them. But they do make the foil a decent amount more efficient, so they're worth having. That's better. So yeah, with the with the sanding, you're Main thing you want to be crucial about is the difference between sanding and fairing. So um, basically sanding is, uh, I guess, refining the surface to remove any minor scratches and things like that. Whereas I'd call fairing um, is essentially removing material to change the overall shape. And so what I'm trying to do is just sand and not fair. I don't want to change the profile or any of the shape of the foil. I just want to remove these these scratches. And the best way to do that, I guess, in my experience, I could be wrong and <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to hear in the comments if anyone has any thoughts on this. But um, yeah, I like to try and use a sanding block as much as I can, just to have a bit more of a displaced area for the, for the sandpaper to contact the foil. Uh, like unfortunately on the wingtips it's such a fine piece of um, geometry that I sort of have to get in with my thumb and just uh, sand it that way. But for the rest of the foil, yeah, just trying to only only remove an even layer of, of material to get rid of the scratches. But yeah, again, very, very tricky on these little winglets because they're a um, very fine piece of geometry and Really just wanting to get rid of little scratches. So I might even save the rest of that for some 1200 so it doesn't take it off as quickly. And um, I think it's somewhat well-known information, but just something to point out with, with foils, like having a, having a scratch on your leading edge is a lot more crucial or critical than having a, a scratch on the trailing edge. And that's just because of the way the, the flow works, I guess you're just trying to um, have as clean flow over the surface of the foil for as long as possible. So 
you know, the flow starts at the leading edge and exits at the trailing edge. So your leading edge is the most critical. And to be honest, like, it depends on what you're trying to achieve as well. Like, it might be, this, this might seem a little excessive for some people because they just want to go out in the water, have a bit of fun. But for me, I like, I like taking care of my equipment and it also makes sure that I can, I guess, reach the, the maximum efficiency of the foil, get the most speed out of it. So any little, um, Imperfection on the leading edge is just going to slow you down, so it's worth um, worth putting in a little bit of time to to get rid of any little scratches and things. So, so it's looking a lot better now. Uh, still working on this other side. It's just had a little bit more excess than the other than this uh, bottom side of the foil. I don't know from from my experience, like sort of being taught to only run along along the. Uh, the quarter of the foil when I'm sanding as much as possible so that the scratches I guess that you're putting in like the minor microscopic scratches or whatever you want to call them go go the length of the foil or sorry but the length of the cord I think <laughs> this is one of those things where people have a lot of um, a lot of different thoughts and potentially we could be starting um, a bit of a war in the comments potentially so it'll um yeah interested in your, your guys thoughts on the uh, on different sanding techniques, what achieves um, what achieves best performance, or you know, doesn't destroy the performance of your foil. In saying that, like again, going back to what I was saying before, it sort of depends what you're trying to trying to do with your foil, because scratches might even help you uh, help you in a in a funny way, like. Slowing your foil down might might actually help with with wave riding and and different things like that. But for racing, yeah, <laughs> I'd say it's not gonna not gonna have the effect that you want it to have. So I'm just trying to really get into this winglet here, but it's um yeah, not the not the easiest bit of geometry to to get into. Go back to just using the paper. It's starting to look better. That's just something that you do as well. Run your fingers along the, the cord of the foil, just trying to feel any bumps. As I said, I'm not, not trying to fare, but <laughs> unfortunately with geometry as small as this little winglet, it's really difficult to take an even, even surface off. So it's a bit of a different style video. Just thought I'd get my thoughts out for for maintenance on foils, I guess, and yeah, just sanding in general for foils. In saying that, I got I got some tutorials on the way. Been working on um, just on some some of the Instagram reels that I've been posting. Just sort of taking a deeper dive into those because Instagram's like a great place to to reach more people but um, unfortunately the the content that's successful on Instagram is sort of shorter form and you you really can't capture the nuance of a lot of the things that I am trying to discuss about wing foiling so yeah I think um, the videos I got coming out soon will will be good to clarify um, for toe side tacking for a little bit more nuance on the switching feet side of things. Um, yeah, there's a few, few more topics I'm gonna be focusing on a bit, so if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to um, to take a peek at those. That's starting to feel better. Just got a bit of excess on the trailing edge that I'm trying to, trying to get rid of, because we don't want that trailing edge to be thicker than it needs to be. We just want to clean somewhat sharp surface for the, the flow to exit the foil. I think we got rid of all the excess along here. Yeah, that's feeling good now. Yeah, Ooh, there's probably just a little bit left there. So I'll get the sanding block on with that. 
That's much nicer. Yeah, so unfortunately I've been out sick. <laughs> it's, um, it's been a bit of a pain. Like I've had this bug for a, a week or two and my, uh, my right ear's been blocked and yeah, it's just been going through, uh, trying to get through it so I can get back out in the water. Some of the local guys have been having, having some good sessions down, down like Mornington Way and out at Green Point. We've sort of, um, we've turned the corner a little bit here in Melbourne with, with the conditions. It's definitely, uh, definitely getting colder and, um, and the wind is sort of starting to disappear on us. We're starting to see like some more easterlies and things like that blowing through, but still plenty of opportunity if you've got the time. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to sneak out soon. Also got some new gear coming um, in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna be testing out some of the, some of the new F1 wings. So I think um, potentially, uh, so the Strike V4, which I'm really excited about because it's got this, um, yeah, got a new handle system. So be interested to try, try that out and see how it works. And then maybe, maybe an or Origin, like um, sort of a real comfortable wing to ride by the sounds of it with, with um, yeah, just a lot easier because I think with the last strike they went, they went for a lot of power and stiffness in the wing and um, I think some people found it a little bit uncomfortable to ride, but it was really high performance and I, I actually really liked the V3. So it'd be interesting to see how the V4 goes and then, yeah, that Origin will be um, a big one just for, you know, a nice cruisy session when you're, you're not wanting to do too, anything too, um, too radical and just want to take it easy on the old arms. Um, hey, so I'm just going to clean up this wing tip now and then we might do a once over over the whole foil just to pick up on any any real small scratches that you can't really see. So I'm, <laughs> I hope you're enjoying my messy garage. Just a bunch of random winging crap <laughs> thrown all over the place. Probably needs a good sweep out as well. But I spend my time sanding foils instead. So here we go. Getting rid of all that excess. Um, yeah, I guess it's, in terms of foil maintenance, there's... A few little, um, a few little secrets, or oh, secret, um, secret tricks that you can use for really quick ones. Uh, I've heard a few guys actually talking about those paint markers. I haven't tested that out myself yet, but it'd be interesting just to feel really small, small um, scratches, because they they'd be quick dry and yeah, it'd be an easy way to to fill a scratch without having to put epoxy on it and wait for the epoxy to go off and then. That sort of thing. I know a lot of guys use like fillers and things like that as well. Uh, one trick that I that I picked up from my dad was um, you can get bicarb soda and and super glue, and that's for like really instant repairs. I think from the sounds of it, they picked it up from I've heard like the remote control helicopter community use it quite a bit to to like to fix their, their rotor blades on their remote control helicopters. Essentially, you, like, you just drop some, a couple of drops of super glue and then you sprinkle bicarb over it and the super glue goes off instantly and then you, you can pretty much sand it straight away. So it's a, it's a little interesting, little interesting hack to try. <laughs> I've been trying to put together a bit of an instant repair kit just in case anything goes wrong at the beach. So. Got some um, some sort of spinnaker repair tape, like the 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 Dacron sort of tape that you used to repair your wing coming, because been um, having to do a couple small patch repairs recently, and yeah, just need to get some more of that. Yeah, and just having spare bolts and stuff in the car has been a major as well. Just like just so if anything goes wrong, you're just ready to go, get you back out in the water, and even just like spare. Uh, spare tools, just in case you you crack the the tool that you use to pull your foil apart. Because uh, I don't know about you, but I, I don't drive the biggest car, so <laughs> I'd, I'd be in a bit of strife if I wasn't able to take the foil off my board. <laughs> I'd be stuck at the beach. But yeah, I'd be interested to hear whether you guys have any um, any recommendations for things like that, just to 
session savers, I guess you could call them. <laughs> the, um, hopefully this audio is not too bad with the, the old sandpaper running back and forward, but yeah, I just figured I'd try out something different. There's a bit of a bulb on the trailing edge, I guess, because I had the, the foil hanging this way so that the epoxy sort of run to the bottom. It's going to be a, a bit of a pain to, to get rid of, so maybe next time I'll, um, I don't know, maybe just try and orient orientate the foil a different way so it drips off another spot. But I guess, as I said, like trailing edge is probably less crucial than the leading edge, at least. It's just this winglet's a pain to get into, but we'll get there. Let's take our time. Yeah, I'm also keen to, uh, I mean, like every every man and their dog, keen to have a crack at some downwinding at some point. So I think I'll be getting a downwind board in in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to America pretty soon for the Warra 1000, which is like this crazy, crazy catamaran race down the, oh, it's up the east coast of America. It starts sort of like Hollywood Beach and it runs a thousand miles up the coast and um, yeah my dad's dad's doing the event and I'm gonna head over play shore crew and run up run up the coast <laughs> following them and so yeah I might not might not be on the on the wing as much but yeah excited excited for the trip gonna be a bit of fun but yeah when I get back from that I think I think I'm gonna have a crack at, at downwind foiling just to um, yeah just to try something different really enjoyed winging and um, you know, going catching waves on the wing and flagging it out and surfing around for a bit. So downwinding will be a bit of fun. Be um, yeah, it'll be something different. Keen to hear your recommendations though on gear. If you've um, if you guys have got any experience with downwinding, I'm thinking like looking at like a seven foot four board. I think it's maybe 20 or 19 inches wide. Tricky thing I'm at the moment is like the the foil development because foil brands are starting to make sort of downwind specific foils the the size of them relative to foils that we've seen in the past it it makes it a little bit confusing because it sounds like the something that's like a thousand square centimeters is going to behave more like something that's like 13 1400 square centimeters and because of the profiles that they're choosing of the foil like the, I guess the airfoil sections that they're choosing, or hydrofoil sections. Yeah, it's really bringing the low, the low end down. So I don't know, like the, the Eagle X just got announced and it looks really cool. But I don't know how that'll go as a, I guess a beginner downwind foil. It'll be, um, yeah, interesting to, to do some reading online and just see what people's thoughts are on that. Otherwise, yeah, I was thinking maybe like, I think there's a 7Cs 1500. There's a, there's a Jam 1600. I'm pretty sure. So whether that's something that would be achievable to to learn. I know guys say just go as big as possible um, to to learn, but I, I kind of want to, I know it's, <laughs> it's you know, think that I should be biting my tongue when I say this, or <laughs> but I just want to ideally sneak away with, with one foil to learn and then ride for, you know, six months, but might not be might not be super realistic with a with a new discipline that's looking way better and then i guess there's even paddles that you can talk about as well like i know there's i think what surface areas are like 80 90 square centimeters or something like that something i've been reading but could be wrong and then i think they go like some of the guys are running like 100 100 square centimeters so that they can have slower cadence but a bit more load through the shoulders so be um yeah interested to hear your thoughts on that as well yeah we're almost there i'll do a um yeah it's just a bit on the i don't know i'm gonna get that might have to pick up some some lower grid again than 1600 or just spend a bit of time working on this but yeah i mean paddle wise it's gonna be tricky because i've heard the adjustable paddles don't seem to last as long or i've heard people splitting them and breaking them but i guess the fixed paddles only downside is you're, you're set with one length from when you, you paddle up onto foil and then when you're actually up on foil. Because I know some guys with the adjustables, they they adjust it and then keep pumping and paddling around. 
with a longer, you know, they, they make it a bit longer so they can reach the water a bit easier once, once you're up on the foil and you've got that extra mast height. But I don't know, just food for thought, I guess. I have been eyeing off, um, eyeing off the smaller side of things, I guess, just because I feel like I feel like I'd be able to learn a faster cadence of of pumping and paddling, so that I don't load the shoulders load the shoulders too significantly, and that way I can I guess get away with more paddle up attempts when I'm learning, and then just really lean on cardio fitness, having the heart beat through the chest sort of thing to be able to learn that side of it. But yeah, I'm, I'm keen, keen to try it out because we get some, get some nice rolling bay waves and I think like a, a wing up wind and then deflate and go down wind would be, be a lot of, lot of fun and a good way to sort of explore the bay. Grab a new piece of sandpaper and go from there. Yeah, I'll do a little bit more over this side and then finish up on the other side. Ooh, we get dark in here. Bump this ISO up. That's probably a little bit better. Just bump the ISO up so we can still see. Um, but yeah, I'm really keen to um, get my hands on some new gear soon and go through the whole process of dialing in the muscle memory again. I think I'll step down to a uh, I mean, I'm riding a 75 litre board at the moment, but they, um, the new F1 boards are, they don't have the 75 anymore, but they've got a 70 and an 80. So I think I'm, I'll drop the five litres and, and go down to the 70 and give that a run for its money. And the shapes look really cool. It's got a bit more of a recess deck. Be a bit of fun to test out. And yeah, maybe, maybe get my hands on one of those Eagle X's and see what all this, uh, what this new higher spec stuff's all about. I have really been enjoying the, this Eagle 690 though. It's a weapon of a foil. I think I've managed to hit like 27 knots with this one pretty comfortably. And I think if I had a bit more flat water, I could probably push, push a knot or two more out of it. And now that I've gotten rid of some of these scratches as well, might, um, might be able to achieve something, something special. Okay, there we go. I might just finish on this 600 grit and see how it plays out on the water. I know, like I've heard heard guys talk about like for for dirtier water or you know water that's got a bit of like silt or something in it. You can go to like um, like you stay in the lower lower grits so that the flow can stay attached to the foil a bit better, even with all the pollute like you know the pollution in the water or whatever and then in clean, cleaner and flatter less turbulent water you can go to really high grits and even like polishes and stuff again though like this is i don't know how much theory is behind this it's just sort of things i've heard so yeah i'll just i'll just hit, finish it on the 600 today can always come back and work my way up to the to the 1200 and i really should pick up some 800 as well and just so i've got like a nice little step <laughs> between between the two grits, otherwise it's sort of a, a big jump and you might end up leaving some of the, the scratches from the 600 in with the 1200. So I've actually in the past even gone to the point of like sanding these little decals off because if you, f if you feel them, they, they do have a bit of a bump to them. But in saying that, they're in the back sort of three quarters of the foil. So I don't know if they really, they probably don't do too much. Especially because I'm not, actually running any going to any racing events or anything I haven't done that for a little while i don't know might do it at some point again bring back all the the old sailing knowledge but yeah hopefully i can get over this bug pretty soon and get back out in the water we really should pick up some some trestles or something hey it's um a bit funny working like this do what you can with what you have i guess <laughs> there we go once I get this cleaned up, I'll probably wrap it up after that. I know I said I wasn't going to fair it, but just try and get a little bit pointier on this this winglet. Really get it nice and pointy so that it's ready to redirect those tip vortices away from the away from the flow and make this thing as efficient as possible. But yeah, I think um, we'd love to hear what you guys think about this whole downwinding thing and what gear you've been trying and 
thoughts on thoughts on different gear for learning it. I'm still going to be still going to be winging, but it's fun picking up new skills. I haven't really um, done much paddling before, so it'll be interesting to test it out. Okay, beautiful. Just get a microfiber and give it a bit of a wipe down. Okay, it's a nice little clean off, nice and shiny. Well, yeah, I mean that's that's about it for me. Just wanted to jump on, make something a little different, have a bit of a chat, and um, yeah, looking forward to hearing what your thoughts are on uh, on downwinding, on the content I've been making, you know, the tutorials and things, whether they've been helping. I've had a few guys, um, yeah, had a few guys mention that some of the stuff's been helping, and even just hearing like slightly different opinions on things has been really cool. So yeah, I'd love to hear it below. So chuck it in the comments if you got got any thoughts on any of that. Yeah. Make sure to subscribe to uh, to see all the, the new tutorials and things I'll be posting soon. So, cool. Thanks for watching.